Have you ever heard of one of the best female painters during the 1600s? Well, today is a good day because I will be talking about Artemisia Gentileschi and her artwork, which is known as Judith and Holofernes. Also, we will be looking at how her artwork made a great impact in her life and also for other women in that time as well. Another thing is the reasons of why she made those artworks. Being one of the greatest female painters is something you want to sit down right about now and learn some facts about her because this woman was a strong woman ahead of her time and being one of the best female painters during the 1600s and 1700s was pretty tough. Her painting might be a little rough and disturbing for some people, but you will be fine and amazed after this. Enjoy everyone, and I hope you have a good time watching this video. Gentileschi was born on July 8, 1593 in Rome, Italy. Gentileschi was an Italian Baroque painter, and today she is considered one of the most accomplished painters in the generation following that of Caravaggio. She was also the only female follower of Caravaggio whom she worked with in Italy in the early 17th century. She was the daughter of Horacio Gensileschi, so in knowing that, you would wonder if she just turned out just like her father. As a young girl, Gensileschi served as an apprentice to her father, learning the skills of a professional writer in order to succeed as a painter. Due to her being too advanced, from what she was already being taught by her father. Later, he then hired the painter, Agustino Tassi, to further her skills for painting, because at the time, Tassi was a well-known artist and was able to help her out. Since Tassi was hired by Gentileschi's father, he took it into consideration to help her get the skills she needed to become a successful painter. But that was not the only case about Tassi helping her out. Tassi later raped Gentileschi, which gave a bad reputation for Gentileschi. He was later then put into trial after being found guilty for raping Gentileschi. He was put in jail for eight months. Due to this happening, Gentileschi was viewed very bad by people, suffering from gossip that made her look as a trampy woman. This gives a little bit of an understanding of what made Gentileschi the woman she was viewed during her time and also viewed as up to this day. Her paintings having meanings behind it, which made her express herself. This is one of many Gentileschi's artworks that she has created. This painting is called Judith and Holofernes from 1612 to 1613, which shows a woman named Judith slaying Holofernes head with a sword. The woman to the left of her was a maid servant that helped her kill Holofernes. There are many things in history that are tied into this painting having meaning behind it than just the meaning we see. For instance, the Counter Reformation is linked with this, the Baroque art movement, and also the Protestant Reformation. We will talk more about these major events throughout the video. But for now, let's focus more on the details of the painting, Judith and Holofernes. In, in Gentileschi's painting, Judith and Holofernes, the woman on the far right, is wearing a gold dress, which is Judith. She is a white woman who is in her 30s, has a clear face with no wrinkles, has short brown hair, and also has red lipstick on her lips. Judith is cutting the white man's head off with a large sword that has a gold handle while with the other hand she is holding his head having a serious face like she doesn't care. The man lying on the white mattress with the blood gushing out of his neck is Holofernes. He is a white man with a brown long beard and mustache. Has a distorted suffering face after having his neck sliced and has pinkish cheeks. To the left you see Judas maidservant. She is a white young woman pressing down against Holofernes' head, keeping him from escaping. The beheading has a blue puffy dress that is worn out. 
Her face looks as if she is disturbed due to seeing the beheading going on, but she still helps Artemisia. Character Judith, either way. In the background, you can see that it is all black with a white mist in some parts, which makes the whole scene of the beheading look suspenseful and evil. Now we will look towards the artwork, formally analyzing it. Folk point in the artwork is a murder of the man, Holofernes, which is what catches the most attention in the painting, so therefore it's eye-catching to the viewer. The rhythm in this is alternating rhythm, which the blood in the picture is placed side by side in the painting, as on the bed, the neck of Holofernes, woman's body, and also sword, which blood is repeated more than once. It is also asymmetrical because both sides aren't identical and they differ from one another. The left side shows the man's lower body and the right side shows the upper body and both women's which doesn't make the artwork similar on both sides. There is so much to explain and go into detail with this artwork defining the elements of art. I will point out a couple to make a better understanding. Chiaro Scuro in this is the lighting which gives out a shade in the painting, like on their bodies, faces, arms, sword, and also bed having shade on it. Therefore, it also signifies tenebrism. Organic line is depicted here when looking at the man's facial expression because he is being tortured and also the forehead has wrinkles. This artwork is viewed as representational art because it looks so realistic and also the bloody killing scene looks realistic as well. You can see negative space in the artwork which is on the top only having a dark view not being able to see anything but a white mist. During the early 1700s the Baroque art movement occurred in Italy and lasted over a century in some parts of Europe which was an art less complex, more realistic and emotionally. Gentileschi has some qualities associated with the Baroque art movement according to the editors of Encyclopedia Britannica they stated, some of the qualities most frequently associated with the Baroque are drama, vitality, movement, tension, and a tendency to blur distinctions between the various arts. In other words, Gentileschi was associated with drama, vitality, movement, and tension, which most of them can be symbolized as iconography in the painting. For instance, Judith and Holofernes shows drama due to the slaying. Cultural studies is seen here as the Baroque art movement showing how strong of a woman Jen Selesky was and how she portrayed her artwork with different qualities the Baroque art had. According to the article, Jen Selesky, Judith Sling Holofernes, Camara wrote about how Judith was seen as an Old Testament antitype of the Virgin Mary and also by extension as a symbol of the church. So therefore you can see iconography portrayed there due to her being a prototype of the Virgin Mary. In other words, Gentileschi here is viewed as another Virgin Mary to the people. In Camara's artwork, she stated, The increase in portrayals of Judith in the late 16th and 17th centuries, when the Catholic Church engaged in conflicts, due to that, the Catholic Church had conflict with both the Protestants and the Ottoman Turks, which helped identify the cultural studies in it. What this means is that Camara explained how the portrayals Gentileschi used with Judith increased a lot making it more of a conflict. Judith being symbolized as a church gives the church a meaning to which is God's protection from enemies like the Protestants. Holofernes is seen as the Protestants, so therefore he is killed by Judith. The iconography shown in the painting is how Gentileschi really made Holofernes' neck look very bloody, symbolizing on how she had all her beheadings messy and also her way of making the destruction of religious images. Gentileschi's paintings accompany the struggle that will go in around the 1700s for women and that being said she was a magnificent role model for feminists. Therefore, gender studies is involved with this because Gentileschi has women look up to her and also she is represented as a powerful strong woman. Women living in the 1700s wasn't good at all. They were basically forced to do what they were told and had no power of anything because men were the ones who had control. So by that being said, Gentileschi went through harsh times becoming the best female painter there is today.
After hearing the life and artwork of Jen Zaleski, I hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot about her. So many women look up to her because of what she went through, but not also her, but women in general at the time during the 16 and 1700s. Also, I hope you got a better understanding of the artwork with the context and meaning behind it. Thank you. Here's the artwork that I made, which Jenseleski inspired me. So what we have here is Jenseleski being in the middle, holding a sword and woman around her, worshiping her. And that is because during the 1700s, women had no rights. They could not do anything. They would just be at home. And men were the ones who were took in charge and did everything. And so that being said, those women are looking up to her as a role model because she, going through those harsh times, she became a famous painter. And well, as you see, the focal point is Jenseleski in the middle that catches the most attention in the artwork. The proportion is Artemisia looking bigger than the woman around her. Also, it would be symmetrical because both sides would be identical showing half of Artemisia and the woman as well. The negative space is the top showing all the black which I got from her painting, Judith and Holofernes. I used local colors to make the artwork look light. 